We are going to go ahead and get started. We'll start with you, if we may, uh, Nathan Ramsey. That should be on and ready to go. Good afternoon. My, good evening. My name is Nathan Ramsey. I'm a candidate for North Carolina House. My beautiful wife, Robin, is here. She's also a Buncombe County girl, grew up in West Asheville, went to Asheville High, and because of uh, 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 an 80-yard touchdown pass in the final minute, she gets bragging rights for the next year because her alma mater beat my alma mater in football a couple weeks ago. But uh, I grew up here, went to Buncombe County Public Schools, graduated from UNC Asheville, went off to law school, came back, and started milking cows. My family, we have a, a third-generation dairy farmer. We milk about 170 cows over the mountain here in Fairview. Um, ship about 1,500 gallons of, of milk a day. I had the honor to serve you as chairman of the Board of Commissioners for eight years. I served with four Democrats during that period. I was recognized by the State Association of County Commissioners for uh, working on uh, bipartisan lines to solve problems. Recognized statewide for leadership in land conservation, affordable housing, among many other things. I'm proud of that record. Was endorsed twice by the Buncombe County Association of Educators because of my support for schools. Unfortunately, Ms. Wilson has chosen, uh, for whatever reason, to distort my record when I was county commission. She sent out a letter and said, I cut funding for schools. On the back table, there's a chart from Buncombe County Finance Department. It shows the funding for Buncombe County Schools. It was increased 51% over the eight years that I was on the board. Funding was never cut, increased from 32 million to 50 million. We spent $242 million over eight years on school capital projects in Buncombe County, paying off debt and other things. This is from the Buncombe County Finance Department. Uh, her allies are sending out mailers to said I've lied about school funding. I understand I might need plastic surgery, didn't realize I needed a nose job, thought I needed some lipo because I could lose a few pounds, maybe more than a few. All right, so, Mr. Ramsey. Thank you so much, and everyone's entitled their own opinion, not their own thoughts. All right, thank you, sir. My name is Susan Wilson. I'm running for North Carolina House 115. I am an attorney and a mediator. I moved to North Carolina 21 years ago to Buncombe County because of the quality of life the beauty of the area, and because of the good education in the public schools. Uh, my partner, my stepson, and I um, have enjoyed living here. Um, he had a number of initials after his name. Uh, the first four were ADHD, and then the rest of them were other things that different people wanted to add on. Uh, and the Buckley County Schools really did a wonderful, wonderful job with him. So I want to see schooling remain a top priority for the General Assembly, which it was not this past year. I also have represented a number of different constituencies that saw money cut from uh, important programs for them. I represented uh, parents in child support court. I prosecuted abuse and neglect cases. I have been a guardian ad litem attorney advocate for abused children, for incompetent adults. I have seen our mental health system be cut. I have seen uh, us lose Medicaid so that we have children, we have the elderly, we have uh, disabled who are being cut off of those roles. Um, I have also watched them go after women's health. And as for um, some of the, the comments that Mr. Ramsey made, I will simply say, I don't know, I've never seen the one that he claimed my allies sent. I don't have allies that I'm aware of. As for the other, in 2003, there was a vote uh, that would have cut the schools. Um, it was later mediated out. If you will notice, in 2003, there really was no increase. Right, this was the only year. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I will remind you, keep your uh, responses pertinent to the issue at the end, no personal attacks. You're absolutely able to respond, though, to uh, you know, false allegations or allegations. All right, here we go. And we'll start with you, Mr. Ramsey. In the last session, the General Assembly voted to enact a voter ID. It was vetoed by the governor. If elected, would you support a voter ID and what is your rationale behind your vote? I support a reasonable voter ID law. 
in Buncombe County, uh, our board, and to be honest, I, I, I voted against that. I, I voted in support of what the Board of Elections had requested through our, our board, which is the majority of those would be Democrats, but uh, our board in Buncombe County, we have paper ballots because of the concern about voter fraud. And uh, our board made that decision, and I think you know that's a reasonable decision to make. Um, and so uh, I think to, uh, and to make sure we have integrity in the voting process, a reasonable voter ID is, 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 is supported. Uh, I support early voting. I support uh, you know, same-day registration, all the advancements. When I first was elected, we had four uh, early voting sites. Uh, I think the final year I was on the board, we had 12 early voting sites. This year, we have 18 early voting sites. All right, thank you, Ms. Wilson. Would you please repeat the question? Absolutely. In the last session, the General Assembly voted to enact a voter ID. It was vetoed by the governor. If elected, would you support a voter ID and explain your rationale? No, I would not. Um, in areas where they've tried to determine exactly how much voter fraud there is, uh, I think the highest number I saw was 0 .004, uh, which is ridiculous. Um, the only reason why you would use a voter ID is to try and suppress groups like minorities and the elderly who might find it a financial hardship, um, who don't have them anymore because they either uh, aren't to that point or um, <coughs> have lost a license because they have reached an age where they can no longer drive. All right, thank you. Uh, this is going to be a 30-second expansion for Mr. Ramsey specifically. A flyer in your name went out stating that voter fraud happens, quote, all too often. Would you defend or disavow this mailing? We, we live in the mountains of North Carolina. My family is from Madison County. We've lived here over 200 years, and if anybody has ever grown up in these mountains, we know voter fraud has happened for generations. And so uh, I think you know to, uh, to have a paper ballot verification, to have reasonable requirements to make sure that the person going in to vote is who they say they are, is, is, is very appropriate. Chairman Sobel is here. I, I used to joke, uh, in that race, I won by twice as many votes as the president uh, won the state of Florida out of 90,000 cast okay, 741 sir. votes. Thank you, sir. All right, we're going to start with you, Ms. Wilson, with the next question. Would you support local efforts aimed at amending the U.S. Constitution so that corporations are not the equivalent of people and that money is not the same as speech, or in other words, uh, overturn the Supreme Court Citizens United decision? Yes, I would. Okay, would you like to explain your, your Well, uh, yes. Um, one of the things that has happened in elections is that they have become um, exorbitant in their price. And part of the reason is because of Citizens United. Uh, by declaring that corporations could give as much money and they could do it behind the scenes, um, the cost of elections is out of control. Uh, whatever the thing was that Mr. Ramsey held up um, is a direct result of that type of thing, of the super PACs, et cetera, and that's a result of Citizens United. All right, Mr. Wilson, would you like me to repeat the question? Or do you... I didn't know we were married, but uh, I am married to... Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Ramsey, I did say that. Didn't I could have adopted my wife's name. I'm sleep talking at this hour of the day. I apologize, Mr. Wilson Ramsey. Wilson is a very good man. So. That's right. You're making me with your wife. Absolutely. <laughs> Would you like me to repeat that question? Yeah, <laughs> Would you support efforts aimed at to amend the U.S. Constitution so that corporations are not the equivalent of people, that money is not the same as speech, in other words, to overturn the Supreme Court C Citizens United decision? I think that we've got to protect the First Amendment, and the First Amendment means an individual, whether it's Warren Buffett or Bill Gates, can go out and buy billboards or do whatever the heck they want to to promote whatever agenda they have, just like uh, little old me can go out and petition our county commissioners and say, you know, here's what I think we, we should do. So, you know, I, I think we need to have transparency. We need to know where the money's coming from. We need to have full disclosure. And, uh, you know, so I would support anything to include transparency to know who's trying to buy elections. And you know I'm very familiar with it. Uh, I appreciate the pretty pictures because you don't get very good pictures of me. But you know uh, groups are sending out all kinds of stuff, 
that quite frankly aren't true. But in a, in a free society, that's why we have this forum, because I'm here and I have the opportunity to say it's not true. This is not the facts. Uh, never cut spending. Never for education. Was endorsed by our teachers on multiple occasions. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to start this question with you, Mr. Ramsey. I do have the name right. What is your position on the Equal Rights Amendment? Why or, would you, why or why not would you support it? Well, my wife contends women are not equal to men. They are superior. And hence, uh, uh, you know, uh, I certainly am living in a house uh, full of women. My, my mother-in-law lives right across the hall. And uh, my mother lives about half a mile down the road. So uh, if I did anything that would offend women, uh, I would be in serious trouble. Bill Stanley gave me the best advice in my marital uh, life seven years ago when uh, me and my wife got married that every argument he has with, with his wife, Jane Stanley, ends in yes ma'am. That's why they've been married over 50 years. And so uh, certainly I'm, I'm willing to look into supporting the Equal Rights Amendment. We already have the 14th Amendment Equal Protection Clause and under that everyone is created equal and deserves equal treatment. So specifically, your response is you would look uh, into it? Or I, 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 the last time ERA was discussed in North Carolina, I was in elementary school <laughs> in Fairview Elementary. So if, if that comes on the agenda to the General Assembly, then I'm willing to discuss it. And that beautiful little girl on the front row, and my mother-in-law who lives in my house, uh, and my mother down the road, you know, I'm going to listen to what they say because if I don't, my life is not going to be very pleasant. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I would definitely support the ERA. Um, I think if the ERA had passed, we would not have seen some of what happened on the national level or the state level. I don't think we would have had a discussion on women's health that excluded women uh, with a panel of only men. And so, yes, I would support the Equal Rights Amendment. We need the 14th Amendment, depending on who is making the decision, does or does not uh, cover women. Um, I believe there was a, a statement by Scalia, and I could be incorrect, but I believe uh, that he said specifically that the Constitution didn't cover women. All right, thank you. I want to remind everybody, please turn off your cell phones or put them on silent or vibrate. Uh, also, if you have a question you would like asked and you do not have a note card, raise your hand. We will bring a note card to you, and then when you're done writing out your question, raise the card up, and we will bring, we will pick it up and bring it up to me. All right, we'll start with you, Ms. Wilson. What can be done to increase accountability in North Carolina schools? Tenure does not seem to work. Throwing good money after bad with the top heavy school systems is how it's worded here. Actually, uh, school administration is a minuscule portion of the budget. Um, when you're looking at tenure, there was a reason why tenure was passed. And it was passed because what happened was every time an administration changed, or a party changed, everybody got fired and a whole new set came in. And so we kept changing teachers sort of like a revolving door. So anybody that had, uh, t I guess, uh, uh, experience kept getting lost and kept getting new people. Uh, that's the reason behind tenure. I think that there are ways of giving uh, acknowledgement to teachers who do well and to look at ones just like you would anywhere. I, if they're not doing well, then there should be ways of retraining them and if the retraining doesn't work, then looking into ways that, that they can be let go. All right, thank you. Mr. Francis? I think the best thing the state can do to improve accountability in our schools is to uh, let those decisions be made at the local level. Currently, all these decisions are made out of Raleigh. They micromanage your school budget. If you're serving on the school board, you only have any discretion uh, of, of, with really your local county dollars. And that's the wonderful thing about being a county commissioner is you sit down with your school board members and your teachers and the administration to, to hear what their needs are and to try to address and solve problems. When I was on the board of commissioners, every month I met with our, our school personnel to, to see what we could do to help improve Bunkin County schools. And if I'm elected, 
uh, the first uh, piece of legislation that I will introduce is to uh, make the state funding go directly to school boards with uh, some accountability standards, but that let those local school boards make the decision with the state dollars that they receive. All right, on a related note, but that would be a full minute if needed. Do you believe schools are adequately funded currently? And if not, what would you do to increase funding? And we will start with you, Mr. Ramsey. I think uh, in every organization, there's always a need for additional resources. So, you know, I think our schools, I think our private business, our dairy farming, our dairy farm, we need funding. There's a lot of things we need to buy, a lot of capital expenditures we need to make. Unfortunately, in life, we have to make uh, difficult decisions. Uh, I, I do think in state government, before we start raising taxes, there's a lot of areas of redundancy and duplication, uh, especially in the university system, the community college system, uh, that uh, we need to root out and to become more efficient. But I have a proven record over eight years on the Board of Commissioners, I increased school funding 51%. I voted for eight county budgets. Uh, we never cut funding one year. It was endorsed by Lincoln County teachers two times. Uh, spent uh, uh, a significant amount of money on school capital projects. So uh, I think I have a record of supporting our schools and supporting our teachers. Ms. Wilson? We saw severe cuts happen at the state level that have made a huge impact on the local level, and it's made impacts all across the state. Last year, we lost 88 teachers because of school cuts, and we have increased the number of kids that are coming into our school system. Not only did we lose teachers, we lost teachers' assistants, we lost the money for supplies. Teachers are spending $300 out of their own pockets to provide supplies that their students need. They also had a minuscule raise uh, and their insurance has gone up. So we are actually relying on teachers to provide things that I think the state needs to provide. And we need to refund our schools at an adequate level. And we also need to um, look at our priorities and put our children first. Um, we'll start with you, Ms. Wilson, on this question. Environmental protection seems to be a partisan issue quite often. The question specifically is, would you ever oppose an environmental protection bill and under what circumstances? And Mr. Ramsey, when it comes to you, the question is, would you ever support an environmental protection measure and under what circumstances? I think it would depend on, on what was in it. Um, I think that there may be some regulations that go too far. Uh, we want to have common sense regulations. We want to have things that will protect but not uh, hinder development. Um, so there may be a bill that I would look at and, and decide that we need to, to uh, send back to committee because it needs to be modified. All right. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Well, I have a record of when I was on the Board of Commissioners of supporting environmental protections. Buckingham County is a leader in land conservation. Before I was on the board, the county had devoted a couple hundred thousand dollars for land conservation. Uh, after I was on the board, it certainly wasn't all my doing because nothing positive happens because of one person. It takes a team effort, and uh, you know when good things happen, you got to spread the credit around. When bad things happen, people tend to want to blame you. But um, I voted for stormwater controls uh, in Buncombe County, voted for some steep slope regulations, but where I'm not going to vote for uh, regulations that where uh, it harms affordable housing, it doesn't make sense for the cost involved. Uh, also, we support a Clean Smoke Stacks Act, and Senate Bill 3, the Renewable Portfolio Standard, uh, to, uh, as a resolution when I was on the board. So I think I do have a record of supporting environmental rules when I think they make sense. All right, Mr. Ramsey, we'll start with you. Would you vote to expand Medicaid under the Affordable Care Act? Why or why not? First five years, it's a no-brainer. I'm going to take free money whenever I can from the federal government. They have a printing press. Uh, state government doesn't. And the last time I checked, I don't think county government does either. So when the state's going to pick up all the Medicaid costs, uh, that makes sense. The, the structural problem with state budgets um, is really a large part of that is with Medicaid. 
It's just not North Carolina. Every state in the nation, their Medicaid expenditures have been growing far faster than any source of revenue they have. Uh, in North Carolina, in 1990, Medicaid, con Medicaid constituted 5% of our state budget. Today, it was over 15%, growing to almost 20%. So, uh, you know, what I'm, I'm going to support is uh, Senator Alexander out of Tennessee has got a bill that proposes that the federal government take over all Medicaid costs because the federal government sets the rules. So let the federal government figure out how to solve health care. And in, in exchange, the states take over all transportation and uh, school funding. That's about an even swap. Mr. And I think we need to have more accountability. Thank you, sir. Ms. Wilson? Uh, yes, I would agree with the Medicaid expansion under the Affordable Care Act. Okay. All right, we'll start with you, Ms. Wilson. Are you in favor of reasonable tort reform? I'll answer this the same way that I did uh, in a previous one. There is a reason why we have uh, something called torts. If you want to know what torts are, it's a personal injury, it's negligence, it's when you get hit by a car um, and it's not your fault. It's when a doctor leaves something in you while you are being operated on. Those are what torts are. Uh, there's a reason why they were created in the first place. Um, there was a gentleman in California who was uh, for tort reform and was very happy when they got the cap until he was in an accident a few years later and realized that that cap now that he was a paraplegic, would not provide for the care that he needed. I think we need to begin with attorneys that take garbage cases, who simply are going after a settlement because they know some of these big places will settle rather than go through um, payments of litigation. All right, thank you, Ms. Wilson, Mr. Ramsey. I support reasonable for reform. Most attorneys aren't going to accept garbage cases because they have to front in all the costs. They don't get paid until they receive a recovery. So unless you're one of these wealthy trial lawyers that can fly around the country in your private jet and a part of the you know one percent crowd, you know you can't. The average uh, attorney here in Black Mountain cannot do that. They're not going to file a lawsuit unless it makes sense. Um, you know, the uh, medical malpractice reform that our state passed this year is going to play a large part in helping North Carolina attract more doctors to address the primary care physician shortage that we're going to face. Um, the, uh, the workers' comp reform was passed on a bipartisan basis where you got the attorneys, the uh, businesses, uh, folks from all political persuasions and sit down and say, how can we solve this? How can we do it in a better way? And if, if I'm elected, that's what I will try to do. I'll try to reach out to everybody and try to find the best solution we can. All right, thank you, Mr. Ramsey. Have you ever conducted public business on personal electronic devices, and would you commit to not doing so? I think that's an impossibility. You mean like a cell phone? I would imagine that is what uh, um, it's meant, but it's how you take I, I, I was a bit, I'm a dairy farmer, and um, Oftentimes, I would speak with Commissioner Peterson while I was out on the, in the cow lot. Uh, I used to joke with David Young. He'd call me up. Uh, I'd be scraping cow manure, and I, I said, you know, you got to go on vacations to work and on, on cruises, and I'm out here scraping cow manure. Uh, I would call our uh, county staff sometimes at 5 o'clock in the morning and leave voicemails about the stuff I was thinking about. So, you know, when I had a, a chance on the farm, so there's no way that I could do my uh, do this job without uh, conducting public business uh, on, on, on the phone. I can attest that you've done these interviews while out on the dairy farm with the cows <laughs> in the background. Ms. Wilson. Ask that question again, please. Have you ever conducted public business? I, you've not been a public official, but I, I assume it means in the future. Would you commit to not doing public business on personal electronic devices. Uh, I am presuming the, that what they're talking about is using a, you know, a personal computer or something <coughs> like that. Um, I would probably try to limit it as much as possible. Uh, but I think there are times, like Mr. Ramsey was talking about, when you 
wind up and the only phone you have is your personal phone and you are making uh, calls on public business. All right. Let's we'll start with you, Ms. Wilson. The restructuring of mental health care in North Carolina has failed. How would you address and pay for changes to mental health care in the state? First of all, I would make the Medicaid match so that we actually got the federal dollars that we needed. Also, when you make the Medicaid match, there's sort of a smorgasbord of choices, and one of them is mental health services that you can bring down as well. Um, the other thing that I would do is I would talk to many of the local mental health uh, individuals who are actually practicing in the field and have some ideas of how it can be reformed. Unfortunately, I think we have a lot of people who are talking about mental health reform and have never never ever done anything in the field and so they don't know how how it's conducted what's needed or how to go about it so i think you have to go to the experts and you have to talk with them and you have to come up with a joint plan and i think as, as mr ramsey has said if we don't all work together to create a working system and if we don't cross lines then we're never going to get a mental health system that helps the abused and neglected the mentally ill, et cetera. Right. Thanks, Thank Wilson. Thank you. Mr. Ramsey? First meeting, I, I was on the Board of Commissioners. The only official business outside of appointing a vice chair and, and maybe a few other things is I was appointed to the Blue Ridge Mental Health Board. And I quickly found out why I was chosen to serve on that board. It was one of the most rewarding experiences of the time I was on the Board of Commissioners, but also one of the more uh, difficult boards or difficult uh, tasks that uh, I've ever encountered. And I quickly found out that uh, you're going to pay for folks that have mental health, mental illness, substance abuse problems um, one way or the other. So you're going to pay through it the ER, the jails. Uh, it might not be county dollars, it might not be state dollars, but someone in our community is going to pay for that. So, um, you know, Buckingham County has been very fortunate to have some good leadership in this area and have adopted some things that if we could take their wisdom and insight and, and go statewide, we would be in much better shape than we are. The one thing I would question about what Ms. Wilson's talking about making the Medicaid match, if you're saying that- Ms. Uh, Senator Ramsey, you'll need to wrap it up. <coughs> Give me 30 seconds to expand. We have to have some cost controls in the Medicaid system. The state currently spends $4 billion a year in state dollars on Medicaid. That's about half as much as we spend on K-12 education. If we don't have some way to ameliorate that cost or the federal government does not relieve that cost from us, it's going to consume the state budget and we can't raise your taxes enough to pay for that. So there's a smart way to deal with it. Ms. Wilson, would you like to respond and not get all on that? Well, I would simply say that when you don't make the Medicaid match, you're leaving money on the table because you're not bringing in the federal funds that will help uh, cover many of the expenses that we've been talking about. All right, thank you. We'll start with you, Mr. Ramsey. How would you work to create a collaborative versus contentious environment in Rome? Well, for eight years, I served with four Democrats. Uh, on most things, we were able to work together to find a solution that most of us could agree on, and probably for six of those eight years that we had a split vote, I was in the majority. Did we agree on everything? Some things come down to more partisan things, but most of the problems that we face in our community, if you lost your home to foreclosure, you lost your job, no one asks what your political party is, uh, and the people standing in the unemployment line, that's a, this recession has affected us all. I was recognized by our State County Commissioners Association for working on, on a bipartisan way to solve problems. But, you know, when they called me and they said, hey, you know, here, we want to know what you know differently than what best practices you could give us. You know what I told them? It has nothing to do with me. I happen to serve with some people that, even though they might not agree with me, they would call me up and say, what do you think, Nathan? What do you think we ought to do? And so if you sit down and talk with people and say, I am willing to consider your opinion, that, that makes someone much more willing to work and solve a, a problem. All right, thank you, Mr. Ramsey. I've done domestic law for a long time, and I can tell you that if you aren't willing to work with the other side, you're never going to get anywhere. It is much better to mediate or to do something collaboratively 
than it is to constantly fight and butt heads. For one thing, you don't get anything done, and we've seen that on the national and on the state level. So I would definitely want to reach across the aisle and say, we need to work together. We've already talked about uh, the workers' comp bill that was a bipartisan effort. There are many other things that I think we can do that are bipartisan. All right, we've got two more questions. We'll start with you, Ms. Wilson. What is your position on women's reproductive rights? And please explain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I believe that women should have the right to make decisions about their own body. And I also think that women who wind up in a position where they are looking at uh, what they're going to do because they suddenly wound up pregnant or it's unexpected or there is some uh, health issue. I am not them. I cannot make decisions for them, nor should I be making decisions for them. I am not a doctor. I should not get in between a woman and her physician. I'm not in the position of the family. I'm not in the position of their a religious advisor, and I think it's something that they need to decide on their own without the legislature stepping in to the middle of that and making decisions that they know nothing about. Mr. Renzi. Uh, I support women's health. Uh, we need women. Women are the backbone of our society. Uh, when I was on the Board of Commissioners, we worked very hard to work to reduce and eliminate racial uh, health disparities in Buncombe County. I served on, I had the honor of serving on the Board of Health, and that was one of our strategic goals. We worked to, to way to uh, improve cancer screenings for women so that uh, low-income women could get the screenings they need to, uh, to save it, and in some cases, it saved their lives. Um, you know, I think a lot of times it's, uh, you know, reasonable people can disagree. And so you can be a woman and be pro-life, and you can be a woman and be pro-choice. And the, you know, the woman's right to know bill that was introduced in the legislature was introduced by a female legislator from Charlotte who was raped when she was a uh, college student at UNC Chapel Hill. And so we just need to sometimes get beyond a lot of the politics and realize that these are very complex issues. You know, I'm gonna stand on the side of protecting the innocent and the unborn, but, uh, Ms. Ramsey, please wrap up. Thank you. We'll start with you with the final question, though. America's in debt. As we know, $16 trillion the deficit. North Carolina in debt, several billion dollars. What would you do to downsize that debt? Would you raise taxes? North Carolina has a manageable debt burden, so, uh, you know, we don't, we need the federal government to be healthy. So hopefully our problems at the national level will get straightened out because it's sort of like the old joke, when the state catches the cold, the local governments catch the flu. And the same is true with the federal government. If the federal government's not healthy, that's not good for, for any of us. Uh, you know, the specific issue on the unemployment, uh, the state owes th over $3 billion to the federal government. We're going to have to find a financing mechanism to pay that debt off so we can reform our unemployment system in North Carolina. Um, I think uh, the state needs to uh, be very careful about uh, issuing debt in the future, but you know, reasonable debt is appropriate. When I left the Board of Commissioners, uh, we had about $150 million in debt. Over $100 million of that was related to schools. But you know, we uh, issued over $45 million in new debt to make capital improvements in all the city and county schools. We did uh, debt to support AB Tech. So, in appropriate cases, debt is, a, is not a bad thing. All right, thank you, Mr. Ramsey, Ms. Wilson. Well, I think rather than looking to raise taxes, we need to look at employing our people so that we can raise our tax base. And part of how we do that is by investing in our people. We invest in our education. We invest in job training. We invest in bringing businesses into the state, and we invest in getting our people back to work. And when we do that, we will find that our tax base increases. We will also find that our debt will be taken care of because we will have the money from our working individuals to be able to pay it. Thank you. All right, before we dismiss our candidates, uh, a couple of notes. First of all, 
We had a lot of questions that we were unable to get to. So I encourage our candidates to please be in the back. We'll have a few minutes before we bring up the Buncombe County uh, Commission candidates. So please do go and ask your questions of the candidates directly if you want to know them. And I apologize, but uh, we, we are short on time. I also want to let you know that when you do go cast your ballot, our voting opens on the 18th, right here in this handy dandy library. You've got this handy dandy card that has all of your early voting locations. You can pick it up. I saw a few also on some of the candidates' tables, but uh, you can do that anywhere. You don't have to go to a specific location, okay? Uh, also, certain races are not partisan. They are nonpartisan races. School board is one, soil and water, and of course your president and vice president. So before you, if you are going to vote straight party ticket, before you do that, Please do look through and vote on the nonpartisan races. Also, judicial candidates are nonpartisan. Uh, we do have school board races going on right now. We had we had the candidates here in our first um, first forum on two weeks ago. There are three districts right now, plus one at large that you'll be asked to cast a ballot for. You will can't you are able to cast one for each district. Doesn't matter where you live. Those districts are Owen, Robertson, and North Buncombe, plus the at-large. In two years, the other three districts will be up for election. So again, school board, don't pass on that. Mr. Ramsey, Ms. Wilson, we thank you very much for your time and your energy. And I know it's, it's a, it takes a whole lot to get out there campaigning. More power to you, but uh, we appreciate your time.